I'm Carol Reeves and I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Science and Technology Studies at UCL. The Galton Collection contains objects used, invented and collected by Sir Francis Galton uh, related to his various interests in ethnography, statistics, meteorology, criminology, crime science and anthropometrics. For example, he was the first person to create a detailed statistical model of fingerprint analysis and showed that these are virtually unique and therefore an identifiable physical feature. He developed the weather map, the composite photograph, and also, of course, invented the term eugenics to describe the idea of breeding the more suitable races or classes of people whilst reducing the progeny of the less suitable. Galton's anthropometric laboratory was incorporated into UCL in 1904, and Galton bequeathed his own collection to UCL when he died in 1911. His protege, Carl Pearson, became the first Galton professor of eugenics at UCL, although this was later changed to the Galton Chair of Genetics. So the Galton collection and its history are significantly important, both to UCL and to researchers who want to understand Galton's ideas. And indeed, these were the ideas of many white Europeans of the time. Eugen Fischer was a German professor of medicine, anthropology and eugenics. Now, like many anthropologists of his time working at the turn of the 20th century, he was interested in race and its associated ideas of the evolutionary superiority and inferiority of peoples. The success of white middle-class Europeans in colonizing and subjugating indigenous peoples was believed to reflect their evolutionary and racial superiority. And Fischer conducted field research in German Southwest Africa, now Namibia, uh, in 1908, using instruments designed to scientifically measure race and by implication inferiority. These included head spanners to measure skull shapes and size, eye and hair colour scales, and of course this is the um, hair colour scale that he created. This hair gauge, manufactured in about 1905 to the design of the anthropologist Eugen Fischer, is important because it contributed to the making of a science of race. The hair scale supposedly represented all the races of the world in a hierarchical manner from flaxen blonde to deep black. It was designed to be a scientific measuring instrument, a standard hair scale, and as such, all race scientists could invest in its truth. And the truth, as far as hair was concerned, was that black, wavy, and so-called woolly hair belonged to the inferior races of the world, people of the southern Mediterranean, Middle East, Asia, and above all, Africa. Wool is the hair of animals, and in humans, it was supposed to denote a status way down the evolutionary scale, up from the ape, but only just. One of the legacies of the hair scale is that the negative associations between hair and race are still prevalent. And you can see it in the desire of people with black and curly hair to dye and straighten it, or to wear wigs to cover it. This was particularly interesting during the increasing anti-Semitism of the Third Reich during the 1930s, when many of Hollywood's biggest stars were Jewish, but became bottle blondes overnight. Fisher sent an estimated 3,000 skulls of Herero and Nama prisoners back to Germany before he went on to study the offspring of German fathers and Nama mothers, arguing that these bastards might be useful as slaves, but they shouldn't reproduce. Fischer returned to Germany, where he taught anthropology and race science at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin. And he became one of the most influential and powerful race scientists in Germany. He was also mentioned by Hitler in his book, Mein Kampf. And amongst his students was Joseph Mengele, the so-called Angel of Auschwitz. Fischer died in 1967, his part in racial genocide having been whitewashed. Well, these objects exist and have a history and we need to tell that story. 
I first discovered Galton and eugenics when I was a student at UCL doing a master's degree in history and philosophy of science, and I was both irresistibly drawn and repelled by it. I wrote a long essay on eugenics, and then I went on to look at Jewish immigration to London for a PhD, so it has had a deep impact on my research. And in fact, I teach uh, aspects of race uh, embedded into my teaching at UCL. And in turn, I haven't yet met a student who doesn't go through the same emotions of fascination and incredulity when confronted with a hair scale or anything else in the Galton collection. Particularly as Galton and Darwin were cousins, came out of the same family and had very similar values. But there's also an argument that eugenics is still with us in the form of pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, female feticide and sterilisation of drug users. <laughs>